you know, uh, extending a warm welcome to all of you, all the attendees who have taken out time, uh, you know, whether you are joining us through the Zoom call, uh, Zoom webinar, or you're actually joining us uh, through YouTube, we extend a very, very warm welcome and thank you, you know, for an extended response across regions. Uh, I think we have been get, getting an amazing response, uh, you know, globally, and, and you know, we, we can't be more than glad for all of you joining in and, you know, participating in this hackathon. So with that said, uh, you know, we we'll start the proceedings. I have, we have a quick presentation for you. We have a small deck that we have kind of made uh, for you and we would like to take you through that. And at the end of that, we'll have a Q&A session and then a team formation, formation session. So, you know, a lot of fun stuff in store for you. So let me just quickly begin by sharing my deck and then we can begin the proceedings. I hope you can see my screen now. All right. Okay, so uh, before we start off, uh, quick introductions. Uh, so for, and uh, join us in the pre-hackologies. Uh, before we begin, quick round of introductions. Uh, I'm Asta, I'm from Angel Hack, and I'm your host for the evening. Along with me, we have uh, from Angel Hack, uh, Mr. Harish. He's a he's a community manager, and Ms. Trisha, who's a marketing manager, who will be helping us out, uh, you know, throughout the event. We also have our distinguished uh, colleagues and members from Dell Technologies, and I would be doing their introductions in a bit. So, you know, before that, let me just take you through, uh, you know, uh, for what you are uh, have come, uh, you know, all you all have come for. Unbounded by Dell Technologies. So what is this? For all of you who have actually been a uh, part of hackathons before, uh, this is just a three-day virtual hackathon, which aims to bring developers like you, designers like you, and entrepreneurs like you across the globe to solve challenges using Provega as an open source system. And we will have a lot more about Provega once our esteemed panelists uh, you know, give you details, insight about that. So uh, for all those friends, colleagues who have still not joined, still deliberating whether they should, uh, you know, uh, still contemplating whether they should join, uh, you know, you should definitely share the experience that we have some real world problems to solve here. You have a lot of chance of networking and definitely, you know, we have, loads of prizes in stores store for you so we're just waiting for all of you to join in and uh, you know uh, uh, you know from the partners perspective this is part by Intel hack and sponsored by Dell technologies right so taking you today so we will take you through the schedule we will take you through the rules definitely introduce you to the judges mentors and the organizing team Post which our uh, you know, colleagues from Dell uh, will take you through the challenges, the prices, the judging criteria, obviously a lot more insights about Provega. And then we would have the facts, uh, FAQs, followed by team formation. So quickly taking you through the schedule first, and I think this is really important. And thanks to all of you, we have, we have seen so many varied responses coming in. Uh, from across the globe that we had to had to uh, you know kind of uh, change this and streamline it to make it more uh, time friend uh, time zone friendly so we have done our best so that all of you across the globe who are joining us could uh, you know uh, get a chance to participate in all the events uh, so these timings uh, uh, you know mind you are in central time uh, you can you know you free, free, feel free to do the maths to kind of convert it into your timing but i'm sure it is you know it is a friendly time for you so uh, coming up on the first day, which is 14th of May, when our events start, uh, that is Friday, next Friday, between 9 to 10.30, we have the opening ceremony, along with the team formation session. So we have a lot in store for you uh, for in the opening ceremony. We have key panelists talking about Provega. We have some exciting stuff in store for you. So do not miss out. And for all the participants joining us 
post uh, this in the next one week, definitely a chance to catch up on, on what we have in store for you. At 10.30 a.m., again, Central Time, the coding begins. Between 10.30 to 11.30, we have a breakout session for you. Now, what this means is basically we would be having a speaker from our esteemed panel, and they would be talking about a very interesting topic close to your heart. We would have the details of the topic and the speaker uh, sent out to you very shortly through Slack and over email, and also the registration uh, links for you to register for the event. Now, uh, we understand, you know, uh, the hackathon uh, can be a little challenging and you would require all the help you need and force uh, on day one and also on day two. So day one, uh, between 11.30 to 1 p.m. Uh, Central Time, we have the mentor official hours. So, you know, do not hesitate. We will be sending out the links very shortly. You can just connect, uh, you know, as a team, uh, you know, uh, your teams can connect. We would have mentors uh, for you at these hours, and they would help you out with all the queries you have and build, help build your idea. And uh, on day one, last but not the least, uh, you know, we, we also want to kind of network with you and, and make this a little more fun. So we have the happy hours coming for you uh, between 1 to 2 p.m. We would have a small mini game for you and speed networking. So, you know, lots and lots of fun this session. Do not miss it out. We would be sending out the registration link shortly. On day two, again, uh, we have the mentor sessions between 9 to 10 a.m. So all those who uh, all those who missed it out on day one, uh, you know, do join in on day two. Again, between 10 to 11 a.m., we have the breakout sessions. And, uh, you know, we would be sending out the details of that also shortly. Last but not the least, between 11 to 12 p.m., uh, we have the pitch workshop is hosted by Angel Hack. And the idea behind that is, you know, by then you must have already had an idea or kind of, uh, you know, created uh, your project. So it's about uh, helping you out with the right pitch uh, to help you out with the details. So we would definitely invite you to the pitching workshop to just, uh, you know, sharpen the skills, you know, take suggestions from us on how you would want to, uh, you know, uh, put it, better to in front of the judges so don't do not miss that out okay so on day three uh, which is uh, 16 which is the sunday between 9 to 10 a.m we have the final technical help session so any one of you who's looking out for any help can join in the session we'll have our esteemed uh, dell colleagues who would be joining in and helping you out with any queries that you have but having said that, uh, between the mentor sessions and the technical sessions, if you have any other queries, uh, you have joined our Slack channels. There is uh, you know, a help desk that is available. There is mentor channel that is available. So feel free to post it, uh, you know, post any queries that you have over there as well. Okay, so uh, our submissions actually close 12 p.m. on uh, the third of uh, on the third day so do not miss out miss out on the submissions that's extremely important and we then have the judges deliberation so the judges will be scoring your projects between uh, you know uh, uh, throughout the day and finally on day 4 which is the 17th of may between 9 to 9:30 we'll have the closing ceremony so you know you will get to know who the winners are uh, you know how 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 did we fare uh, we would have some uh, closing comments from the judges we would be sending out the links very shortly you know we would look forward to host you for the closing ceremony okay coming down to the hackathon rules uh, now we have tried to keep it as simple as possible for you we understand you know things can get complicated so we have tried to uh, make it as easy as possible. All of you developers, designers, and entrepreneurs who are above the age of 18 and who are legal red invited, if you have any questions on which countries Asia Pacific covers, just go to Unbounded uh, uh, website. Uh, you have all the countries listed out there. Okay, the second and most important part is uh, you definitely do not begin your uh, project. Uh, so you may not begin your project until the completion of the competition of, uh, officially begins. So we have, the, uh, we have the coding go live and that is when you actually start building on your project. The other would be obviously not to build on top of the previous best practices across whenever you've uh, been participating in previous hackathons. And finally, the winner teams uh, will be subjected to a code review, uh, either you know, during the event or immediately before winning. 
So those are the hackathon rules for you. If you have any other questions about, uh, you know, the hackathon rules, please feel free to uh, ping us on Slack on need help. And we would, you know, definitely one of our team members will get back to you on this. All right, now coming to the introductions that I've, I was telling you. So first of all, I would like to thank all of our you know, judges, uh, the distinguished members who have taken out time from their busy schedule to actually uh, participate and uh, you know, as judges in, in um, Unbounded. We are very, very thankful. So to begin with, um, we have Mr. Flavio. He's a senior distinguished engineer at the technology. We then have uh, Mr. Srikant. He's the vice president object streams and analytics at Dell Vector Software Engineering, streaming data platform at Dell Technologies. We then have Mr. Russ. He's a senior product uh, manager at Dell Technologies. Last but not the least, uh, we have Mr. Langer. He's the global product lead, one, uh, one cloud data and AI and ATOS. Of time from your busy schedules and, and you know, judging this for us. We are, we, we are more than glad to have you on board. All right, now coming to your mentors. I'm sure uh, so, you, know, you must have met some of your mentors on the Slack channel already. If you have not, uh, you can just go to the mentor uh, channel and post your queries. I'm sure they would be happy to help you. We would also have them in the mentor session of introduction. Uh, for the mentors, we have Mr. Tom. He is a distinguished uh, engineer at their technologies. We have Mr. Andre, he's a distinguished a member of technical staff at Dell Technologies. We also have Mr. Raul, he's a software principal engineer at Dell Technologies. We then have Mr. Sachin Joshi, he's a software senior principal engineer at Dell Technologies. We have Mr. Egor, he's a senior manager, uh, software engineer at Dell Technologies. We have more mentors for you. Uh, we have Mr. Shivesh. He's a distinguished member of technical staff of Dell Technologies. We also have Ms. Prajakta. So we have Mr. Sandeep. He's a software senior principal engineer at Dell Technologies. So once again, extending a big round of thank you for all the mentors, you know, for joining us and helping out the team still now. And I'm sure, you know, they would be happy to help you uh, in the event coming up. So. Just, just go on to the mentors channel if you have any queries and, and you know, they'll be out there to help you. All right, with that said, uh, coming to the Dell organizing team, uh, we have Ms. Amy, uh, she's a senior advisor, product manager and Dell Technologies. And we have Mr. Derek, uh, who's a software senior principal engineer and Pravega IO community manager in Dell Technologies. And they have been key in uh, you know, uh, organizing this event for you. So a very, very warm welcome to Amy and Derek. Uh, I would now hand over uh, you know, uh, the platform to Amy and Flavio from Dell Technologies to take you through the challenges, the judging uh, criteria, the prices, et cetera. So over to you, Amy and Flavio. Um, could you just go to the next slide or did you want me to share my screen? Can you hear me okay? Sorry, I'll go to the next slide. Just one minute. Yes, I can hear you okay. okay. Amy, we can hear you. Okay. So um, for the prizes, the first 25 submissions will be, oh, we'll start with the challenges. Um, so Flavio is gonna give a much better background of what Provega is, but to give a good idea of what it's doing, um, some examples that it's being used for. Um, Provega is a platform that's allowing organizations um, and you know cities and people to, um, ingest streaming data and get business insights out of it. So some examples that we've seen are things like preventative maintenance in a roller coaster, um, testing how many vibrations per second 
And if it's more than it should be, alerting the correct people so that they can maintain the roller coaster before it shuts down and so that they can keep riders safe. Um, other examples are railway cars, um, capturing logos on the railway cars as it drives by with videos and center, sensors and reporting on the contents of that car. Or things like smart cities, um, using traffic lights to detect traffic patterns and change those light rotations to alleviate traffic. So those are just some of the examples um, you'll see today and in the opening ceremony how Provega really is um, across industries, across verticals. It's allowing any organization, any group, any city, any person to really harness whatever streaming data, data they may have to gain whatever business insights they may need. So further to that point, we want you guys to find a data stream and come up with a creative way to use that stream. So really use your creativity um, in finding those data streams. We have a few examples um, on unboundedhackathon.com. Um, there are some social media streams in there, uh, financial market orders, just some examples so that you can kind of get your ideas flowing. Um, but you can use any data set that you'd like. If you need help finding one, definitely reach out to us. We may be able to help um, if you're looking for something specific. But what we want you to do with that data stream is use Provega with that data set and write some sample code to bring your idea to life. Um, for the submission, it's pretty simple, a one to two page PDF document that describes your idea. So what challenge is it meeting? Um, why is it helpful? What data source are you using? And how is it feasible in the real world? And again, that could be for a large organization, a small business, a city, a person. It doesn't have to be for you know, a B2B kind of interaction, but how would it be used in real life? And then a video also describing the same. So less than five minutes, um, you know, these two, the PDF and the video shouldn't be um, you know, too much work. It's really just about pitching your idea to the judges so that they can capture your idea quickly before they take a look at your GitHub project, which is another part of your submission, um, is that GitHub project with that sample code. So that's what the challenge consists of. Again, we just want you guys to get really creative and share some cool ideas with us and you know, use Provega and see um, how it can be used. So whenever you're ready, Ashla, the next slide. So for the prizes, the first 25 submissions um, will receive a swag box with Dell Technologies and Provega swag. Um, it's valued at more than $100, so it's some really great pieces in there. Um, and other than those first 25 submissions, which, um, you know, get your submission in early so that you can get one of those, but the winner is going to get a $5,000 grand prize. So as um, you may know the teams are anywhere from one to five people. So that $5,000 will be um, bulk for the team. And then the runner up will, um, each team member will get an Oculus 2 VR headset. So those are the prizes. I'll pass it over to Flavio to talk more about Provega. Thanks, Emmy. Am I audible? Okay, perfect. Uh, so thanks, Ashta and, and Amy. Thanks for the introduction. So you, I hope everyone uh, is safe, whatever you are. Um, we had Amy talk about uh, Provega in practice, a few, uh, a couple of observations on uh, the use cases you would see of Provega in the real world. Uh, my goal here is to tell you a few words about the project itself, where we are coming from, um, sort of aspects of, uh, of the project that are, that are interesting for us at the, at the technical level. So the project starts in uh, 2016 and it focuses on uh, streaming data. So streaming data for us is any source of data that is continuously creating and emitting it. And you can think of uh, video cameras, uh, IoT sensors, I don't know, databases, end users that are continuously creating this data in a way that uh, you want to leverage in, uh, in, in your application. Now, when we, we looked at what existed in the ecosystem, what kind of tools and, um, and, um, 
and software stacks that existed for implementing such streaming data pipelines. We observed uh, a lot of things that we found uh, complex and difficult to, to handle. For example, some of the, of the systems we came across, they provide uh, a limited amount of storage for any given stream, or you can call it a topic in the, in the language of messaging systems, or they would not really provide uh, mechanisms that allowed you to uh, uh, obtain or, or guarantee strong consistency. So you would, they wouldn't have the mechanisms to um, completely avoid duplicates or, or even missing data. And given that a lot of applications end up dealing with like workload variations, you have uh, more users coming, more sensors coming, uh, or sensors leaving and uh, end users leaving. So you have this kind of dynamics in your application. It's very important that uh, you're able to handle with such a, with such workload variations. So all those observations made us develop a system that uh, was able to provide all of that for applications to build effective streaming data pipelines. So Provega is a system that uh, enables applications to ingest, store, and serve data to any processing application that wants to derive uh, results, observations, insights, uh, alerts, whatever it makes sense for, uh, for the application uh, with low latency and high throughput. And it, for Provega, it doesn't matter if you are interested in processing uh, fresh data or if you're interested in processing data from, say, a, a year ago. So Provega provides you the ability of storing an unbounded amount of data and, uh, and again, processing the fresh data in the stream or going back in time as far as you'd like to reprocess or process it in a, in a different way. So Provega is also uh, called native. Uh, it's called native in at least two ways. So one is the way we leverage a horizontally scalable uh, cloud storage to provide this ability of, um, of storing an abundant amount of data per stream. And we also rely on Kubernetes as the primary way of uh, deploying and, and running applications in production. So that in more concrete terms means that we have uh, in, our, in our project uh, container images, uh, operators, Helm charts, everything to get it to run effectively in Kubernetes and to make it easy to, uh, to, to install as well. And, and finally, Provega is open source. So when we started the project, we had in mind that uh, we want to eventually open source it and have it being a community driven project. And it is what, uh, what it is today. So Provega is part of uh, the, the, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, so CNCF, which is part of the Linux Foundation. And, uh, and we expect uh, contributors to come and help us to drive the direction of the project, contribute code, contribute features, whatever enriches the, 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 the whole ecosystem and, uh, and the project itself. And so with that, uh, I wanna thank you again for participating. I'm looking forward to, uh, to seeing you know, your projects, uh, the outcome of what you develop as I, I'm a judge, as has been mentioned before. So good luck and let us know if uh, there's anything we can help you with. Thanks a lot, Rio, for that uh, you know, introduction and detail about Rebecca. Uh, I think it was really insightful for all our participants. So just uh, judging criteria, I think this is something uh, that all of you would be interested in knowing. So for the judging criteria are aspects that you need to keep an eye on and our scoring of the, you know, the judges will be scoring your projects on a basis of zero to 10 points. So, uh, you know, and these uh, would be definitely broadened. So the broadened judge, uh, judging criteria are obviously the challenge. So, uh, you know, uh, what is the need of the challenge in today's world that is definitely that you should keep in mind followed by impact i think your idea should definitely have an impact and it should have a valuable impact in the real world so again 25 percent of points uh, would be for that uh, the other 25 percent would be for creativity so we we would definitely want to know how much or you know um, of, you, you know, you as a team, how much can you innovate and you can give us an innovative solution for the challenge. 
and definitely the 25 percent on flexibility so uh, you know if, if the idea needs to be a uh, uh, made feasible for a large scale organization, how feasible is your idea? So, so this is what the judging criteria looks like for you. Obviously we talked about the tech, uh, thanks to Flavio and Amy uh, to give you the details. Now, uh, taking you through the hackathon facts. Now, again, as I mentioned, who can participate? Uh, this is, you know, um, uh, while I've already mentioned this, uh, in the rules before, but just, just to reiterate, it's 18 years above and uh, you have to be a resident of US, uh, APAC or Japan for APAC, the countries that we're covering, just go to the website and you'll get all the details there. How can I get help? So uh, definitely an important one, just go into the help desk channel that we have. And by the way, for all of you, you who have not joined Slack till now, uh, please do that as soon as possible. We have been sending reminders, but uh, you know, as and when you get time, please do join because you have a lot going on there and definitely uh, either the mentors or uh, one of the organizing team members or one of your fellow colleagues will actually help you out. So do join uh, us you know, on the Slack channel. Coming to the submissions. Now, this is a question that we've been getting quite often. And while we've answered uh, this, you know, in different uh, channels that we have, we also have uh, this, uh, you know, uh, put across on the uh, on our uh, website. But uh, as Amy mentioned, uh, basically what you need to do is you need to register your project in virtual.hackathon.io. And if you go to our website, you actually have a project submission link which would be live once we start coding uh, for you guys. So basically it gets live on the 14th and you just have to go in there uh, and you know fill in the submission and, and you know what you need, need to do when you're uh, doing the submission. While Amy just mentioned that, just you know, giving you a brief idea, you need to submit one PDF. Try to make it short between one of two pages, uh, not limited, but just try and make it as impactful as you can. Apart from that, you would uh, need uh, to submit one link for your GitHub project. And also this would be followed by one video file, uh, which would be less than five minutes. Uh, please keep in mind, it should be MP4. That describes your idea uh, in details, including the challenge, uh, how you would want to address it. And uh, for this, if you need any help, uh, we have a pitch workshop on day, uh, day two. So we will be sending out the links, uh, you know, the Angel Hack team can help you out, uh, design your pitch for this. So do not miss that out. And finally, you have the submissions, uh, which would be going, uh, which would be closing at around 12 p.m. CST, central time that is. So do not miss out this window and do submit your challenges. All right, uh, another very important rule, and I'm sure uh, all of you have actually uh, participated in hackathons before. Uh, the fresh code, uh, code rule is live over here as well. Now, basically uh, developers before the start of Unbounded can create wireframes, designs and user flows. However, we need uh, to keep things fair. All codes must be written at Unbounded by Dell Technologies. That means once we begin the co coding, we actually expect you to start coding only post that and finish obviously before the submissions end so that you know you can submit it across. But just to keep things fair for everyone, uh, please try sticking on to this. All right, with that, uh, we come to the team formation fold. So we have a lot, uh, you know, I know some of you have already come in with teams. Some of you are looking for teams in this and we already have some kind of, uh, you know, uh, so we have a team formation channel, which is already created uh, on our Slack. And we also have a lot of participants actually posting in there. We also have a roster, a team formation roster that we would, uh, you know, uh, encourage you to fill out in case you are looking for part of, uh, team members. But just, uh, you know, for, uh, for right now, if you could scan this URL or go to the Britty link that is mentioned in your, uh, screens uh, in front of you and if you could uh, you know let us know your view on the status of the team formation and uh, you know this would just uh, help us provide who's still looking in for teams and we can you know uh, curate this better so just leaving my scheme for a minute there if you want to scan the url or or go to the bitly link uh, you know copy the bitly link you can just do that all right i think uh, 
With that, we come to the end of the session, but we still have uh, the Q&A and uh, the team formation session for you. So what we'll do is we'll take uh, the questions that you have already posted on the Zoom chat here. Our team is also trying to fetch the questions that you, for those of you who have joined on YouTube, uh, our team is trying to pull up those questions and, and see you know, uh, how we can answer that and our panelists can answer that. But also, uh, we would be follow this session would be followed by a team building session, which would be an open session where all of you who are looking for teams get a chance to introduce yourself and speak. Okay, with that, uh, you know, moving to the Q and A session, I think I would be st I'll stop sharing my screen now and try looking at some questions that you guys have posted. Okay, I see seven of them have already been answered, but still just in the interest of all the participants, we would uh, try reading out the questions for you and, and uh, just try reading out the answers that the teams have already, uh, our, uh, you know, uh, our organizing team has already given. Okay, so Ram asks, what is the time zone uh, and the timeline that is being described? So Amy has answered that for you, Ram, it's CST Central Time Zone US. But uh, as I mentioned, since we were seeing a lot of participation from across the globe, we have actually tried to change the time, I mean, not the time zone, uh, but, but try, try changing the time schedule so that it fits all the time zones. So it uh, don't worry, it definitely, if you, if you are actually based out of India, it will be definitely IST friendly. So don't worry around that. Okay. Uh, the next question was uh, from Ankur. We saw a COVID related, uh, website on hackathon resource page uh, the website fetches data from api uh, in almost real time how can pravega uh, fit into the pipeline okay i think uh, derek has already answered that but for the interest of uh, you know our larger audience derek if you could unmute and and you know give us a little bit of details on on this query sure yeah i said um you know, at present, Praveka doesn't have a JavaScript client, so you may need to provide yourself a few backend components to move the data around with Pravega. Um, I suggested maybe um, a data fetch to Pravega component to ingest the feed into Pravega, and then an additional um, component that would uh, push the Pravega feed out over server sent events um, to, get, to get that feed out to web browsers. You know, there would be many ways to to achieve this and you know these are just um, some example ideas so what about the gateways we have Derek could they use I don't know one of the gateways we have developed grpc or I don't know we have developed uh, them. yeah I'm not very well versed in grpc in the web browser uh, um, that may be possible um, I guess our our rest gateway may be more um, Okay, I missed the web browser part. Yeah, yeah, they were asking about a uh, a COVID website that pushes live data. Okay, Ankur, I hope that answers your question. I think we have a lot of questions from Ankur. I can see here. Uh, the next question that we have from him is: We saw a Twitter bot on Hackathon resource page. The bot fetches uh, tweets from Twitter in real time. How can Pravega.io uh, fit into this pipeline? Amy, you have answered that, but for the interest of everyone, if you could. Yeah, um, so just two ideas that I could think of that would take real time tweets and use those um, to create some insights would be, for instance, for marketing purposes, if a company was looking for certain keywords, let's say it's a vitamin company, and they want to know how often people tweet about vitamins, what hashtags they use, they could use that information. Um, another example that I've actually personally seen used um, in the healthcare industry is monitoring patients' tweets um, and looking for certain keywords to see if they may need certain um, flags sent to their doctor um, so that we can reach out to them for you know, maybe depression markers or something like that. And that was uh, very impactful in helping those patients. So, you know, there's a million different ways that you could use uh, real-time mm -hmm. tweets, and those are just two examples. Cool. 
Great. I hope that answers your question, Ankur. Uh, the next one, again from Ankur, uh, how different is Pravega from Pache? I think uh, you have got a couple of answers from Derek. Uh, he's also sent you a little more of technical comparison uh, you know, between the two, uh, so you can read it up. But uh, Derek, if you want to quickly touch base on this. Sure. Um, well, I guess, uh, you know, the, the comparison can be quite deep. We have a, a very high level comparison on our, um, on our, on the front page of our website. And, uh, you know, in that comparison, we, we say that Kafka lacks long-term retention, um, durability by default, auto scaling, um, ingestion of large data, such as video, um, efficiency at high partition counts. Uh, we have a blog post about that where you can see um, how Pravega outperforms Kafka at, at thousands of partitions. And um, and there's some features we, we build on top of the stream abstraction, uh, like consistent state replication um, with our state synchronizer and key value tables with our table segments. Um, so there's a little chart that compares Pravega features to Kafka and Pulsar. You might check that out on the front page. And uh, I provided a link in chat to, uh, to our incubation proposal at the CNCF. We're a CNCF sandbox project. And uh, yeah. our first proposal to them contained a pretty deep technical comparison that may interest engineers. Absolutely. And I think uh, for Ankur and all the people who are interested in knowing more about the technical differences, Derek has already posted uh, the link, which gives you a detailed analysis of the difference. Uh, and you can obviously check out the Vega website also, uh, you know, to know more about it. Uh, the next question is how different is Pravega from uh, PubSub services? I think you have again got a detailed uh, you know, insight from Derek around it. Uh, Derek, I'm sorry I'm picking you up uh, so many times, but, but just if you could throw some light for uh, you know, the larger audience around this. Yeah, and others may want to chime in here because it's a pretty diverse topic, but um... In my experience, PubSub services, they typically embed your data in some kind of a message format. Uh, so this is maybe one small difference rather than having a, a Kafka message or a, a rabbit AMQP message. Um, you know, Pravega only length prefixes your event data. Um, so we don't have a, a larger message format that we force you to shove your data into. Um, uh, you know, other PubSub systems have kind of key-based subscription methods. Um, Pravega doesn't have this mm -hmm. currently. Um, keys can be used uh, for writing in Pravega, but on read, you have to persist your own keys and extract them uh, from your event. Uh, this might be a part of the message format in other pub subsystems. Um, you know, and you might be able to wildcard keys for subscription in other pub subsystems. Um, you know, th th and there would be other differences depending on the specific system we're talking about. Um, you know, you might refer to the uh, Kafka comparison in, in the chat as well for this. Uh, I don't know if anyone else wants to chime in on that, that question. But in general, I think that's, that's my take on it. Sure. Thanks for that, Derek. Uh, Flavio, you had something to say? I was just going to add that uh, Derek is absolutely right. It's, uh, there are so many there are different angles which you can use to, to look at the, the difference between the, the two types of systems. We, in Pravega, we focus, we put a lot of, uh, of weight on the fact that uh, you want to ingest data and you want to store data, storing meaning that uh, you want to keep data there long term. You can, if you want to draw an analogy, you know, think of your, of your computer, you store a file there, and if nothing crashes, right, then one year from now, the file will still be there. So, so we, we we think about streaming data that way. PubSub tend, tend to be ephemeral in the sense that you ingest messages and once you consume them, they 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 are gone. You don't care about them anymore. But uh, we treat stream data streaming data again as a, as a resource that you want to keep. You want to process as fast as possible, but at the same time, you want to keep it long term. Makes sense. Thanks. Thanks for that insight, Matthew. 
Uh, the other question that we have was for Ram uh, from Ram, and uh, he mentions that the video pitch can be uploaded on YouTube. I think uh, the answer is pretty straightforward. Yes, you can do that, and you know uh, that would be great. Amy has already answered that. I think we have another uh, two questions. We are open, and I would like our any of our panelists, if you could, you know, help us out answering those. Uh, one of them is from Ankur, who says, "Can we use a?" Uh, CSV or Excel or SQL DB to push the data into Provega? Any of our panelists? Yeah, so. Um, it, oh, in just the last few days, I've actually been working on a Debezium connector. Now it would be able mm -hmm. to, um, to push data from various SQL databases in, into Provega. I haven't. Um, release that yet and I, I barely have a working prototype but but that's coming now you could install your own um, triggers in your database and uh, you know if you can if you can write yeah. Java hooks or, or otherwise you can get your data out um, love you. so, so I, I can I can think of at least two things that you can do uh, but I don't know if, if that counts as SQL but you can use flink SQL to both uh, read and process data and output to uh, output to Provega. So you can use the Flink uh, table API, right? So Flink SQL to um, to do that kind of processing. Uh, we also have uh, an early Presto connector. Um, I actually don't think we have added the the, the insert feature. I, I'm not sure you can write. You can definitely you can certainly read, uh, but it's something we can uh, we can check. So those are two options that are immediate options that come to mind. Thanks for answering that, Derek and Flavio. Uh, we have another question coming up here. It's from Gaurav. So Gaurav says, uh, so in Provega, is there a way to protect data in case Provega server is uh, crashed for some reason or the consumer is down? for some reason, and product keeps on pushing data to Provega. So any thoughts around that, uh, any of our panelists? Uh, infinite retries are kind of built into the Provega client. Um, so if, uh, if the client is given a right command, it will, uh, it has built in fallback procedures um, to wait for the, Provega server to come back up um, to write the produced data. Now it may block, you know, that producer from moving on to, to subsequent events. Um, but that's kind of built into our into our clients. These uh, infinite retries. Uh, someone correct if they're not infinite. There may be like an overall timeout. Um, but I would say this, this sort of thing is built into our client libraries. Okay. I think, I hope that answers your question, uh, Gaurav. I think we have a couple of questions in the chat as well. Let me quickly check what other people are asking. While you do that, Arsa, um, there was a yeah. follow up to the tweet uh, question. So the question, um, my answer was more relevant to filtering tweets. And the question was more about moving the tweet data, say text using Provega. So hopefully Flavio or Derek can help with that. Yeah, I guess to Flavio's point earlier about our various gateways, uh, we have one gateway in particular that's open source, the Provega ingest gateway. Uh, I'm dropping that link in chat right now, but um, this is a simple HTTP server and it'll, it accepts JSON uh, formatted messages and it writes them to a Provega stream. Uh, this would also be relevant to the earlier question about, um, about maybe a COVID integration, but, but certainly you could retrieve tweets in JSON format and then use this ingest gateway to push them into a uh, Provega stream. Thanks for that, Eric. 
Oh, I'm, the link I sent it to the panelists. Let me send it again to all attendees. Sure. Okay, just picking up some questions here from the chat. Uh, just hold on everyone. I guess there was a question about public versus private GitHub repos. Yeah, yeah, I just saw that. Yeah. Any anyone would want to take that? Um, I think we would expect public repos. Uh, we would need to add a bunch of people um, mm -hmm. as as readers on private repositories. I, I would guess this is maybe covered in the hackathon rules. Um, yes, I think they also I'll, ask who owns the ideas. I would, you know, I'd accept participants keep their keep their intellectual property, but but again, I would expect that's somewhere in the in the participation agreement. Correct. Uh, it it is there in the participation agreement. And let me do one thing. Uh, we would just uh, you know kind of uh, park your question, take it back and answer it on Slack. We would just, we have everything in detail in the bodice of an agreement, but then definitely we would uh, just get into it and, and get back. We have some response uh, from Harish. Uh, you can just check that out on chat. Yeah, he confirms public repos will be required. Correct. Yeah. Okay, uh, there is another question uh, that I think we are getting from the uh, YouTube channel. So a couple of questions. Uh, first would be, would there be, would there be more beginner friendly sessions during the hackathon? So just to answer that, definitely, uh, we understand some of you are beginners, you know, trying to look for a team or trying to look for how to curate your ideas. and. You know, for all those people out there, we definitely have, you know, a lot of beginner help sessions that we would be organizing. Uh, you know, uh, we kind of, uh, you know, just join Slack and all the teams that I mentioned. And, and, you know, you can take help from your mentors. If you have any issues, you know, forming the teams, we definitely have, uh, you know, team formation uh, sessions for you. We also have a uh, dedicated mentor hours for you, as I mentioned earlier. So, you know, you can connect, uh, just tune into that. We would be sending you uh, uh, registration uh, links when we have those events, just join in that. But in the meantime, please feel free to ask your queries in the mentor session. I'm sure one of our mentors will pick that up and answer your queries. So to answer your question, yes, we definitely do have Vigno friendly sessions uh, planned across. Another question, uh, that is coming in again from the YouTube chat is, uh, okay, I think it's more to do with the friendly sessions again. So I think I've answered that. Uh, I don't see any questions open uh, in the chat. If there are uh, any last questions that you would want to ask? We definitely have our opening ceremony when we will have a similar round, but if any any other questions you have, please, please do, you know, ask. So I don't know if this is not exactly a question, but I think there is an implicit mm -hmm. question there. Uh, Ankur talking about being a Python developer. Um, we, we actually have a Python client. I don't know if uh, any one of the guys on the call who have uh, worked more closely with the Python client can uh, can cover that question, and tell about the status of the client and such. If not, maybe that's something we can get back to them with on the Slack channel. Well, yeah. I, know it's, I know it's located at pypy.org slash project slash Provega. Um, so you can just do pip install Provega uh, and you'll have the client. It's built on top of the REST client and exposes um, an API that's similar to the REST client. Right, but I wanted one of, um, of the folks working on it to 
talk about what features are there and what is missing and so on. Because I know at least uh, at some point back it was it was not complete. He 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 works, but he was not. Um, uh, it didn't have the, all the features that the Java client has. So it will be good to know where it stands so that they can, uh, whether they can use it or not, right? They can determine if that's, um, that's suitable for their project. Uh, I helped someone go through a sample recently and it did seem fairly functional. Um, uh, you get like a, a segment iterator and then you yeah. iterate over the, the messages or the events in your segment, you, you do have to dispatch each segment to move on to, to subsequent segments. Um, so that was kind of a gotcha we had to we had to work through. You you do have to call this dispatch method on each segment as you're as you're done processing the segment, or it's a right. segment slice. Yeah. So let's do what Amy suggested, right? So uh, Uncle, if you can ask your question on Slack, we'll definitely uh, get back to you. Get back to you on it. Okay, uh, we have another question coming in. Uh, so the question says that when you survey the Pravega uh, customers, what tooling are they requesting? I assume the winners are C++ or Python, not Rust. Uh, anybody, any of our panelists want to answer Connie's uh, query around that? So what is, I, I kind of missed the question. So the question is about what kind of a client, what kind of language we use for uh, for your use cases? Yeah, exactly. What tooling are they requesting? So the exact question is when you survey the Provega customers, what tooling are they you're requesting? Uh, you know, uh, they're assuming that the winners are C++ or Python or, or what is the tooling that they're exactly requesting? I am not sure what a what it, it, the tooling means in this case. So if the, the tool is client bindings, I mean th there are a number. Uh, you can use a number of programming languages. We have direct client bindings, and we have also developed things like the the gRPC gateway. So anything that uh, that can talk gRPC is able to leverage that uh, that gateway. So it's you're not necessarily limited to the languages that uh, mm -hmm. that, that we have. Uh, so from from um, an application and client perspective that uh, that will be an answer um, with respect to tooling so we have developed tools like a, like a, a CLI that you can interact uh, you can use to interact with uh, with uh, with a Pravega deployment right so check status and uh, I don't know the, the perform operations against it so even in samples I think there is a simple uh, CLI that you can use to you know write to a stream and read from a stream um mm -hmm. uh there is metrics i mean that's a it, if you consider that a tool that's also a, a tool that uh that you could use look at metrics right that is being exposed uh and tell you about what's happening in uh, i don't know the segment store and uh, and controller and so on so the status of uh, of the of the deployment um uh of course we have logging so you can use logs for uh, the, to, to debug if you need to um, mm -hmm. I don't know. So those are the ones that come to mind. Carney, I hope that answers your question. But in, in case you want to, you know, kind of reframe your question, please feel free to uh, ping us uh, on the Metas uh, Slack channel. And we will definitely, you know, kind of elaborate on that if required. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We have another question in the question chat. Uh, it's kind of a one-liner uh, from Michael. He asks SDKs and APIs. Uh, Michael, would you want to elaborate on that or uh, would any of the panelists want to pick this up? Yeah, I think we could also maybe include connectors here. Um, mm -hmm. We're continuously expanding how, you know, how you can use Provega, but you know, at present, uh, I guess our Java API and SDK is, is primary. Um, we have a, we're re-implementing, I guess, the client in Rust in order to provide bindings to other languages. Um, presently that, um, that provides GStreamer 
and uh, Python bindings. We have Flink and Spark connectors, so you can, um, you know, implement your solutions with, with Flink or Spark. Um, okay. Flavio mentioned Presto um, earlier that, uh, yeah, I think we, do we have, have log, like log stash, stash in and out, right? Nifi, Sorry. Nifi is there. We have log stash, we have NiFi, uh, Flink, Spark, and GStreamer was made public last week. Um, yeah, I think that's Thanks. most of it. it. It would be great also to see what um, what additionally people connect to during this hackathon, so. Well, thanks. Thanks for clarifying that, Derek and Ashish. Uh, and we do have, we do have Bo Sorry, Ashish. Boomi yeah. We do have Boomi connector as well, in case someone is, uh, someone is interested in. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks for that information, Ashish. Uh, moving on, we are getting one question uh, from the YouTube, and I think this is more, uh, uh, you know, uh, to do with the documentation. So the, the question is, before the start date, can we brainstorm and document a part of our solution, not code? So uh, we have those details in FAQ, but just let me, uh, you know, kind of uh, answer that for you. Uh, you know, the teams are free to kind of develop a wireframe around their ideas or try to create a general idea because before the actual coding begins, but just to be fair to everyone, uh, the coding should actually start only post the coding begins uh, officially, and and you know that is what uh, we want. Uh, but but definitely, if you if you're trying to kind of build a wireframe or, or just trying to ideate your solution, please feel free. But uh, not code definitely. Coding should begin post the you know uh, coding opens. Uh, you know, but uh, Amy, any thoughts around it, uh, or that's what. We should go ahead with. I'm sorry. Can you say that one more time? No, I'm just saying. I think uh, that's what we have in mind, right? Uh, the coding should actually, uh, you know, uh, explicitly begin only post uh, we start uh, the hackathon. The coding, yeah. Um, but I did see in the um, uh, Zoom chat that someone asked if it's okay to brainstorm. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, that's what you know. This session is all about is to really, you know, get your the wheels turning and, you know, start to pay attention to things around you and think, oh, that might be cool if I could use that data. So definitely start brainstorming now, but the coding um, needs to wait until um, the specific time, which is? The 14th of May. Uh, I think it starts around 10.30 uh, Central Time. Yeah. Coding begins 10.30 a.m. Central Time. Correct. All right, I think we have answered most of the queries which is coming to us both from YouTube as well as uh, uh, you know, uh, from the Zoom chat. So if we don't have any more questions uh, around this, uh, definitely, you know, again, reiterating, we would have uh, this session again, uh, post the opening ceremonies. So if you have any more questions, you can either ask uh, us there or, or please feel free to ask uh, any questions on Slack anytime because, you know, we are all there to answer your queries. Uh, so with that, uh, just just wanted to check if we have any, any you know, last minute thoughts uh, from the panelists. And if not, then we can move on to the team building sessions. So just pausing here to check if, if any of the panelists had any, any you know, uh, thing to add on or should we begin with the team formation ceremony so i, I want to thank everyone for participating uh, i think the set of questions that uh, have been asked have been great so great great questions so it's a uh, i think this is an indicator that we'll see many nice solutions right, that i will have to go through next week so i'm looking forward to seeing them and again um you know all the best and uh, let us know if you need anything in the meanwhile Thanks, Flavio. Anyone else? All right. If uh, the list for uh, 
you know, kind of asking those questions, uh, kind of answering those questions for us. You know, it's been it's been great. And thanks a lot, participants, for coming up with those questions and uh, participating here. I think moving on now, uh, it's time uh, we are actually opening the session for the participants to uh, kind of help you our guys out uh, for the team formation. Now, I, I would like to invite my colleague uh, Harish uh, from Angel Hack, who will be helping me uh, out with this session. So before we begin, I would just give you a brief of, of what we have in mind and uh, you know how would we want to take this forward. So any of you who are still looking for a team, uh, we already have a need a team channel uh, where you can just post uh, you know, that you're looking for a team. We also have a team building roster sheet. So in case you still are looking for a team, just uh, please just fill it out and our team will actually help you kind of uh, meet the right, uh, uh, you know, uh, person, meet the right team, kind of match the skills uh, that you're looking for and, and, you know, definitely help you out. But in the meantime, we also thought we would keep a dedicated session for you uh, around this. And the idea is that, you guys, uh, we will uh, leave the session open for you. Uh, the idea is to, uh, you know, open this uh, uh, session completely to uh, help you guys out with the introduction. So, you know, we give you 30 seconds to one minute to introduce yourself, uh, you know, and, and the introductions can include, uh, you know, something about you, uh, what are the skill sets that you have and what are the skill sets specifically that you're looking for. So that then, you know, you can either connect uh, with, uh, you know, with the participants over here or, or participants who are viewing uh, this on YouTube or, or, you know, you can take the conversation on Slack thereafter. So uh, with that said, I'm just opening the session. What you will have to do is just raise your hand and I will actually allow you to speak, uh, you know, uh, kind of, uh, you know, add you to speaking and, and you can just do the introductions and we can kind of do... Uh, you know, find a team for you. So, you know, uh, with that said, just leaving this open, anyone who wants to raise your hands, uh, please do that. And, and, you know, we can take your, we can just unmute you. Anyone who wants to start? I think we have a sh you know a shy bunch of individuals here who don't want to unmute. Uh, we, we don't worry. This I, see, is just a I see one hand raised, but I can't tell who it is. Yes, I think I we have Michael. Okay. I'll oh, there just, you go. Yeah. Hi, guys. Uh, yes. Uh, actually, uh, I already uh, I picked up some uh, teammates on, on the Slack, but they 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 they're not here, so I'm just I'm still trying to look for for a team. Uh, I'm much more on a lamp stock developer and Alexa skills in AWS. So if if somebody needs a, a technical guy, uh, yeah, I, I can if I can join to your team, guys. Thank you so much, Michael, for the quick introduction. Uh, the skill set that you're particularly looking for, uh, you know, any thoughts around that or, or you know, you're open to join a team, if you could just elaborate a bit more. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for maybe a Java developer, actually. A Java mm -hmm. developer. All right. Thanks. Thanks for, uh, you know, uh, doing that. I think uh, anybody who's hearing uh, Michael out, uh, you know, Anybody who's looking for, uh, you know, a, a technical, I mean, uh, Michael is looking for a Java developer. So anyone who has uh, with the skill set, if they want to join Michael's team, please do not hesitate. You can also ping him on Slack. Uh, we would also add, uh, you know, and Michael, please feel free to add your details on the team building uh, roster so that we have like, uh, you know, your name uh, there and, and then people can connect with you. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you too. Any anyone else who wants to actually kind of use this time uh, to fill, find a team or to introduce it themselves, uh, you know, just raise your hands and we'll kind of unmute you.
I think most of you uh, would want to do this on Slack and we, you know, definitely don't mind. Uh, you know, the space is all for you, whether you want to do this on Slack, whether you want to, you know, kind of uh, speak out here or the next session we have for team building post the opening ceremony. But yeah, I mean, we just want you to use uh, either of the spaces to kind of, uh, you know, network with the right people and form the team before the event starts. Okay, I think we uh, don't have many people who would want to uh, probably, uh, you know, kind of introduce themselves here and we completely understand. Uh, but hey guys, uh, just one thing here. Uh, okay, we have someone, all right. So hey guys, just one thing, please, please, if you're looking out for a team, at least, uh, all right, we have someone, let me unmute you. Yep, here you go. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, my name is Rommel Fox. I'm in San Jose, California. I lead a nonprofit applied research organization and welcome inquiries from candidates around the world that may want to join my team. My focus will be on not the prize, but more about actually doing a solution that will be in distributed mode uh, as opposed to the standalone or demo mode. Uh, so if those persons want to join my team, certainly they can add me on LinkedIn or email me directly and I'll put that in the chat. Thank you so much for that in, in, you know, introduction, Ramal. Uh, you know, while you mentioned what kind of people you're looking for, but uh, any particular skill set, uh, technical skill set that you're looking for here, or uh, uh, it, if you would it, want to it, elaborate it, that? I prefer newbies who like to practice. Uh, so obviously those persons with Java 11 or higher based mm -hmm. on the server side. And then certainly those who have experience before, which using streaming messages and big data. Uh, but certainly mm -hmm. I can train persons to do that. So newbies are okay. Okay, that's great to hear. Uh, so for all those out there who are looking for, you know, all those newbies who are trying to kind of looking for someone experience we have around for you. Uh, he has sent his, uh, you know, contact details and we you can find them definitely on Slack. So please feel free to join his team. Uh, thank you so much for that introduction. Uh, I think we already have uh, someone who's paint that they want to join with you. Okay, I think uh, that's, we don't have a lot of people actually kind of uh, raising their hands for forming the teams. So if not, then we would want to end the session over here, but we definitely, definitely encourage, uh, you know, uh, all of you to speak out and, and kind of uh, do that, uh, find your teams uh, before we start the event. So feel free to do that on Slack or the next session we have for you exactly post the opening ceremony. Okay, guys, so uh, I think we have come to the end of uh, pre-hackathon webinar. Uh, thank you so much, first of all, for, for all, you know, to a big uh, thank you to all of you for actually joining in. For all those who have joined us over here and all those who have joined us on YouTube and for all those who would be, uh, you know, uh, who have missed this out, but would be looking at it uh, on YouTube, uh, you know, we encourage you to join the Slack channel and we are definitely, definitely uh, pretty excited uh, to host you uh, between the 14th uh, to the 17th of May uh, for, uh, you know, at Unbounded uh, by Dell Technologies. Just just wishing, uh, you know, uh, this uh, and, and before we actually, you know, end the session, I would like to thank all our panelists for taking out time, uh, you know, and, and doing this for us. Uh, for all the participants out there and the, and the participants who would be joining us between this week to next week, we again have uh, the, uh, the session, which is the opening ceremony, which will have much more, which will have the key uh, you know, uh, speakers and, and uh, we will give you details around this. So don't miss out. Uh, we will be sending out the registration links shortly on Slack. So 
thanks a lot for joining in uh, everyone please stay safe wherever you are and uh, you know wish you a good day or a good night thank you so much